Self-storage is big business and can help us create space in our overcrowded homes. Look at all this! I can't believe it! But some have taken their storage hoarding too far. I'm throwing that way. Don't worry, I've got it. Me, please. No. Clinging on to things they never see or use. This is my life in a box, isn't it? And it's costing them a fortune. I've spent £80,000 or thereabouts on storage. I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. You actually paid money for this. It's nice when it's lit up. <gasps> I'll be asking hoarders to open the doors of their units. Empty out their stash. I wish I was like that. <laughs> and choose to either keep it. I'm feeling a little emotional. Skip it or sell it. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems. You've got a minimum of four to five thousand pounds in the silver. Yes, that's what I like to see, ma'am. To take to auction and make some hard cash. In today's show, our hoarders are reintroduced to their forgotten possessions. Listen, I want you to try this on for me, please. I hope I don't look like a flasher. <laughs> are shocked at what they've hung on to. This is obviously a very foolish thing to have kept. And unearth some hidden gems to sell at auction. Between nine and a half and ten grand. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. Self-storage units are bursting at seams all over Britain as we stash more and more belongings we neither use nor see. I'm in Guildford to help two guys say goodbye to the past for a bright new future when they decide to keep it, skip it or sell it. My first hoarding bachelor in need is fashionista Alan. Alan has spent nearly £2,000 storing things he hasn't seen for over two years and his daughter Cheney wants him to get help. But why did storage become such a necessity for Alan? I've always been a bit of a hoarder, uh, especially where fashion is concerned. Style good and all-round man about town Allen lives in fashionable North London, a mere swagger from the heart of the capital. Over the past 30 years, Allen has built up a successful rag trade on Savile Row, working with couture designers and enjoying a colourful reputation as a trendsetter. The clothing I have in storage is probably from the late 70s onwards. Um, so you've got some great designers who don't even exist today, but in those days they were the best designers in Europe. How are you? I'm all right. You OK? It's not Ben. Mixing with top designers, Alan developed a taste for expensive clubber of the couture variety. That's what I'm well known for, actually, is being a well-dressed man about town. I've always felt myself as a bit of a fashion leader. But sadly for Alan, as the recession hit, his business took a nosedive. I closed my business down in Savile Row because of the rents, the rates. I was just losing money, not making money. Two years ago, Alan had no choice but to put his stuff into storage, an added expense he couldn't afford, and his daughter wants him to stop. I think the clothes are, they're a bit dated. He should have got rid of the things a long time ago. Keeping things in the storage was a bit of a waste of money. Family and friends said, just get rid of it. But then, of course, they're not me. It's very difficult to get rid of things which you're attached to. Alan's rented home may look pristine, but that's because he's packed the acres of old clothes he had in his unit. For Alan, the boxed up clothes are a living reminder of his past jet-setting lifestyle. Are you sure you're going to be able to get rid of everything? Yeah, hopefully. If we can get rid of 80%, I'll be very happy. The hardest decision for him will be giving away all the clothes, because I know he would like to keep some things. Today, Alan wants to take the lead from a style icon and refresh his look and his life. If you look at Elton John and every now and again he gets rid of all his clothes, it's a bit like that for me. Getting rid of a lot of the things I've got in storage would lift a cloud away. Can I help Alan to let go of his trend-setting ways and spend the money on a less flamboyant lifestyle? So, Alan, I'm right in thinking you're the hoarder here. Oh, I'm more than a hoarder, yes. So, what are you hoarding here? Everything that appertains to a fashion business, right through to antiques, many, many different things I've got. So, tell me why you've got all this stuff in storage? Well, when you're quite well known, I suppose, over the years, and people give you gifts and you accumulate clothing and you accumulate things in business 
you don't always want to get rid of it. And you think now it's time to move on with your life? Yeah, I mean, a couple of years ago, maybe I would have had a different attitude, but now my attitude's changed completely, and I need to move on yeah. and get rid of everything that's in storage and have a clean slate. Good. Do you know whether the stuff inside them is worth anything? Oh, yes. The antiques and uh, the china, right through to uh, very old mirrors and original prints, mm. they're, they're worth quite a bit of money, and I know that. What do you see about this, Shaney? Well, I don't mind him giving this stuff away, but I would like well, to He's not going to give it away, he's selling it. Selling it. But I would like to keep some stuff. OK. What sort of things would you like him to keep? Like my grandma's stuff. You're going to let her have her granny's stuff, though, surely? I'm not sure about that. <sighs> well, it's great that you're so on for this, so this is going to be an easy day, isn't it? Let's get going. Today's other hoarder in search of a fresh start is entrepreneur John. Over the past 31 months, John has racked up a £4,500 bill on storage. And brother Neil thinks enough is enough. So why did John succumb to storage? I always feel that something could be of use later on. I'm suffering storage sickness and I actually need the medicine to sort it out. John lives in Ickenham, Middlesex. Now in the heart of suburbia, Ickenham was once a rural village dating back to the Doomsday Book. After getting divorced, John moved back into his mum's house and put his possessions into temporary storage. Two years on and they're still there. Out of sight, out of mind, the storage has got all these goods in them and I haven't got a clue what's actually there. John's hoarding habits don't just stop at the storage unit. Since his mum went into a care home, his things have slowly spread around her house. Now the front room has turned into a dumping ground for all of John's bits and bobs. John needs help because he just keeps everything. But I've seen documents going back to, I think, 1992. Right, I've tidied up the garage. Even the garage is filled to the brim. Oh, yes. What can we say? I've got to get not... rid of a few things. Oh, not, I mean, not too many things, but yeah. just a few. At least I know where everything is, you see. Right. Now, there's a little billiard table at the back there. Right. So where's the cues and the balls? Yes, that's you know, true. That's probably the one thing I do This is your GCSE know. in I know where it is. <laughs> well, it's probably somewhere on one of the shelves, but quite which shelf, I'm not certain. Oh, right. And there is a difference of opinion about where the hoarding gene comes from. I take after my father. John certainly hasn't got it from him. He, he was a very tidy man. I don't know what this is. Well, that's 1989, so it's even greater vintage of papers. You could be looking at a fortune. Well, yes, OK. It's got mould on it. It's got mould on it, but it's valuable. Oh. Well, yeah. are, you, are, you, are you going to archive this? John's very intelligent, he's a PhD. He's got tremendous intelligence, not a lot of common sense. John might not have much in common sense, but he's bright enough to know that paying to store things he can't see or use is crazy. It's really um, a silly amount of money to actually be spending each time. I'm trying to do up my mother's house at the moment. Carpets need replacing. Well, that could have actually paid for all the carpets. In the name of brotherly love, Neil is desperate for John to get that helping hand with letting stuff go. If John wants to skip some of his possessions, I will pay for the skip. But I think at some point you need somebody who's strong standing by your side and making sure that your hand doesn't recoil when you're trying to throw it out, but actually says, right, put your hand on it and throw it out. I want to find out if John is really ready to be cured of his hoarding ways. So I'm wondering here who's the hoarder. You look very sensible and you look a little bit wild. Who's who? Well, I'm afraid it's me. <laughs> mm, it's always the quiet one, isn't it? Well, sometimes, yes. Have you got any idea how much in total you've spent? I would think it must be about £1,800 per year. So it's probably about four and a half thousand, which is quite a lot of money, isn't it, really? I'm not certain whether I've actually been storing rubbish or I'm storing something that's a bit more useful. But either way, it's still a lot of money. I think it just has to be reduced or got rid of. Mm. What do you think about all this, Neil? I think it's just a waste of money. If you don't use stuff, why keep it? So you are going to listen to your little brother? I am going to listen to him, yes, and we're going to see what we can do and see if we can get, really, rid of most of the actual items. So together with the money that you would be making from the sale of your goods, plus all the money you'd be saving on storage bills, 
Have you got a plan for this camp? Yes, I think, I think one of the things which I want to do is to actually um, re-carpet the whole house. Do you know how much that will cost? Do you know? I've got no idea. Mm. Well, it'll be a fair few thousand, let me tell yeah. you that. But quite honestly, if you've got two units and you have stuff of value, plus all the money you can save in storage, I think we're looking at carpets. OK. Hmm. Well, that's good. OK. Today, we're going to get shot of those two units. Neil, are you with me on this? Absolutely. Marvellous. Yes. You and me <laughs> versus John. We're off. Come on, let's okay. do it. We've met our bachelors in need of my help. It's now time to see what's lurking behind the doors of their storage units. Oh. 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 Coming up, our hoarders come face to face with their storage habit. Now this is something special. It's me! Rediscover some forgotten treasures. Well, don't push your fingers through it, because it could be valuable. And are in for a surprise when some pieces go to auction. Oh, my goodness. That's interesting. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. Today, I'm helping two bachelors bog down with man-sized storage bills and possessions from the past. Earlier, we met divorcee John, who put his belongings into storage when he had to move into his mum's house. And fashionista Alan, whose storage spending went off the rails hanging on to his beloved clothes. Later, I'll be asking our antiques expert to help our couples pick out any unwanted treasures which could be sold at auction to recoup some of the money they've spent. Ooh. Now it's time for our holders to get heavy-handed with their items and start searching through the pieces that could bring in the pennies. First up is John, who's about to come face to face with his two units. His brother Neil thinks it's about time he dealt with his unnecessary expense. Oh, I don't know what's in here. Oh, oh, video. Oh, yes. Just what we need from Russia with love. It's obviously a very foolish thing to have kept. I'm just thinking, why didn't it go straight to the dump? In the two years John has had his units, he spent four and a half thousand pounds keeping furniture and possessions he knew he could never fit into his new home. I think he should have sold them years ago. This, I think, was quite a nice rug. And this was one of the uh, mattresses for one of the big beds that I used to have. Oh, dear. Another antique but it's a dust. Now is the time to recoup some money. Fully restored. I need to step in and make sure those boys don't break anything else that might be of value. Look at all this! Oh, my goodness me! Gosh, there's lots of furniture. I yeah. think they all should go, you know, along we, with, you we, know... In 20 years' time, they could become antiques, you know. <laughs> in 20 <laughs> years' time. Right. Don't. We'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll don't. Were there any surprises when you um, Well, I up? hadn't... I'd forgotten completely about this table. Is it reproduction or is it Do you know, I've got meals? absolutely no idea. No idea. Do you no. know how much you paid for it? I think I must have paid probably about £400 for it, something like that. Difficult to tell. Anything that you thought, oh, not that again? This is a rather sort of creaky sideboard, which I'm not certain if that's got any value Just the drawers. All. I can tell from just looking at it, the drawers don't work. You can just... It's going to be... Eh. Oh, the drawers come out. How am I going to get back in? Eh. Oh, that one's... Yeah. yeah, it's just a little bit of a technical uh, adjustment here. There we go. <laughs> I think it's got to go, isn't it? So, John, at the moment, is there anything that you're desperate to keep or is it all up for grabs? Well, I think I would probably keep the rug because that could fit where I am at the moment. It's always very nice to have a rug, I always think, you know, as well. Okay, what do you reckon to the rug, Neil? I think it should go to the auction. But what I'd do, because he's, you know, it's he's, he's been difficult for him, you know, <laughs> just to cheer him up a little bit, is that he puts it in with a reserve on it, you know. Yes, good idea. Yeah. What about sort of... £10,000, something I was like that. £10,000. Oh, a tenner. A tenner. OK, John, I'm off now. And when I come back, I want that rug opened out for inspection, OK? OK, will do. Thank you. I've had enough of John Payne to store items he just doesn't need. It's time to get tough with his stuff. It's now Alan's turn to unlock the doors of his £2,000 storage habit and reveal to his daughter and me what he's been hiding away for two years. Oh, look at this. One of my favourite coats. It brings back a lot of memories. Packed away in these units is a lifetime of designer garments and collectibles that trendsetter Alan had to store away after his Savile Road couture business went bust. Look at this. There's a lot of nice design, beautiful shirts. They all have weird patterns on them. 
I can't wait to help Alan recoup some of his lost money. What have we got here? Is this your market stall? Have you had a look? <laughs> Well, oh. not quite uh, a market stall, but... Uh, mm. no, some I nice guess, bits yes. here. No, there's some nice pieces. Alan's had a love of clothes since his disco days of the 70s. In terms of your own clothing that you've worn, do, are you happy to sell that if there's any worth there? Um, well, there might be a few pieces I'll keep, but 90% I'm going to sell. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what's in these boxes, but I'm going to leave you to empty them if that's all right. Shani, can you help your dad? Great. Thank you. See you later. See you later. To help our hoarders downsize their units, I've given them three hours to get decisive with their stuff. That means sorting their belongings into three categories. Keep it for anything they love, skip it for those over-the-hill items, and sell it for anything they think will bring in cash. I've also included a charity bin. This you think is going to be the biggest area then, do you? I think, I think it is. Well, do you think there's anything we should keep, or I'll sell it all? I think you just should sell all of these. The dated clothes. John and Neil's hoard looks quite respectable and shouldn't be too much of a headache to sort through. But Alan and Cheney's pile looks a bit like the first day of the January sales. Uh, uh, one of my favourite occupations, watching other people work. It's now time to get focused. I always put hangers the same way. Alan is on a mission to empty his storage unit and sell as much as he can, and he hopes there's big bucks in his garments. This is a frock suit, what they call a long jacket. It's like a small coat, but they used to call them frock jackets. I used to wear these all the time. Alan, how are you doing? Fine. You're Look making good progress, aren't you? That's a £1,500 jacket. No. <gasps> Christian Lacroix. Oh, my goodness with me. With a silver seal. I love the lining. Yeah. That is amazing. That's for his couture yeah. collection. Yes. Alan's cell pal is racking up nicely, but there are a few memorable jackets from his past that he just can't let go of. Actually, That's hold it. on, Alan. Yeah. You've added to that in the last few minutes. No, I haven't. You have? That wasn't here before. I'm sure no. it wasn't. Listen, I want you to try this on for me, please. Show My hands are filthy. Show me how dashing you look in it. Give us a twirl. I hope I don't look like a flasher. Actually, it still looks very good on you. All right, you can keep that. There we are. It yeah. still looks very nice. No. So, Shani, what do you think of all the stuff your dad's keeping? I think he's kept the best things. Good. And in terms of the stuff, the clothes that he's selling, do you think people are going to buy these things? Lots of the clothes are really dated, but they might do. I think maybe your dad might want to hear the word vintage instead of dated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whether Alan sells or keeps his suits, at least he's determined not to spend more money on storing them. See, it looks good with white jeans. I want Alan to find out more about how much these clothes could fetch, so I've arranged for our antiques expert, Tom Keane, to step in. Look at that, fits like a glove. Just like a straight jacket. That's that, all right? <laughs> well, there's a market for vintage clothing. My only concern, what I'm looking at so far, they have to look at it all properly, is that is this in the middle of being vintage and not yet. You know, I mean, someone just out of fashion, that's all a bit in the middle where it goes, just goes out of fashion. Tom knows exactly where to go for some fashion advice and is taking Alan to meet vintage menswear specialist David Saxby. Hello, David. How are you? Alan. How are you? Nice are you to meet okay? you. Although not as popular as women's vintage, men's vintage is still desirable and sought after. According to the aficionados, vintage tailoring came to an end in 1975 when it was destroyed by mass production. But what will David make of Alan's suits? Alan, show him what you've got. Yep. It's more sort of high fashion and more clubby than what you do, but you've got very nice quality linens. I mean, obviously, something like this would sell for £500. Really? What do you think, David, so far? I'm reserving judgment until I've seen all of it for a second. Yeah, I'm good yeah. enough for that yeah. moment. This yeah. is a Christian Lacroix. This would sell for sort of between 16 and 1800 pounds, the jacket. But you can see it's quite, uh, you know, quite flashy. It's an acquired taste, huh? Yes. I'm, I'm actually quite interested. I, I, don't, I don't want to be dismissive. It's, it's not my market and it's not the English vintage market. But I remember when people were coming in, when I first opened a vintage shop, people were coming in to go to bad taste parties. When somebody thinks something's really bad taste, 
uh, very soon after it becomes cool again. We, but, can, uh, we can invent a new word here and now and, uh, and start using it. I'd call it new age. New age, would you? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Go, I've got on, it. go on. Green punk. Green punk. Green punk. Green green punk. Green you punk. heard it here first. Right, green <laughs> punk. That's what we want. Green punk from now on. Today, 80s garments are not very valuable. Even Armani can be found very cheaply. But suits from the 60s and 70s are very saleable due to the classic tailoring. For example, an 80s Armani suit might sell for £50, but get a Montague Burton and you're looking at closer to 150 With vintage, of course, it's got to fit and look cute. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just being good quality if it's the wrong size, uh, but... Um, yeah, if, if, if you've got an auction room and some decent tailored kit, there, there'll be a lot of buyers for it, because mm. people are seeking it out. But it's getting harder and harder to find. Alan's garments are 280s for David's vintage shop. Tom thinks he might have more luck with a market stall. Well, yeah, I think it will take Tom's advice. I can't say £1 a garment, but I could probably get rid of it for £5 a garment. But, you know, that sort of thing I would do. Meanwhile, back at the storage unit, John is struggling to let go of his collection of artwork, much to his brother's frustration. Let's have a look at this one. This is February 84. A little bit of restoration, I think. Well, don't push your fingers through it, because it could be valuable. Well, this is a fee from 1984, as, as one can recognise. I just think they're hideous. You know, when he said there was one on signed, I thought it might have been done by his lad when he was about four. But we could be looking at a yacht here. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'll have to get a bigger it's bath a big to yacht And not a little bath one. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. I'll pull it up. And John's rug is still up for a discussion. Well, it, um, it's quite nice, isn't it? I don't think so. It's gone at the edge there. Yeah, but it's gone at the edge there. Yeah, I that, think we should put it into auction. But I might give it to a friend. You've got a friend? I do have a friend, yes. I do. Yes. How are we doing? I see you've got the rug unrolled. We have, we have yes. Ah. Well, what are you thinking, John? Well, this uh, I'm thinking of keeping. You're still thinking of keeping it? I'm still it. thinking of keeping because, but I'm not going to keep it for myself. I'm actually going to give it to someone. Oh, that's OK. So that's so all right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so you're giving it away. The only thing which I think we've got to sort of look at, of course, is these paintings, because that I don't know. Do you love the paintings? Um, one or two I quite like, but I wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be hard to sort of take them out of my hand. OK. Right, that's fine. Is there anything you really want to keep? I don't think so, no. <gasps> so have you been working your magic on him, or are you just clonk him <laughs> over the head? No, 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 no. I just put him in a hypnotic trance every now and again. Marvellous. <laughs> Can you put me in one as well? <laughs> well, whatever Neil's secret is, the boys are being very organised. But we do need to do a bit more research to find out if there's any value in those paintings so John can get rid of everything. Alan and Cheney are really cracking on too. So, all that I want to get rid of, everything there? No. It's a lot of stuff. And it's not just right, Alan's so taste in clothes that's on the flamboyant uh -huh. side. Oh my goodness me! Now this is something special. So This that. is quite spectacular. Oh my goodness, with the cherubs! This was made specially uh, for us when I had Savile Row. I had one of the most spectacular showrooms in Europe. Everybody used to come to it. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. This is original. Great. Something that might be of value to put on his cell pile. With only a few minutes to go, both Alan and John have nearly sorted through all their stuff, and John's feeling pretty chuffed with himself, too. As I've not seen them, I haven't really missed them. Both their storage hoarders have put nearly everything on the cell pile. Good work, boys. I'd take 1400 for the lot. I think that's the result. Is that a I result? think it's a win-win situation win -win for the pair of us. Coming up, antiques expert Tom returns to see if there's value in their goods. As I walk around the corner, I looked at these settees and I thought, ah, there's a few quid there. And there are some surprises at auction. At £340. Yes! Welcome back to Storage Orders, where I've been helping two bachelors recoup the thousands of pounds they've spent on their storage units by making them keep, skip or sell their belongings. Both Alan and John have kept their past lives locked up for long enough, and I want them to be storage-free forever. Alan's cell pal is sorted, but Dodger Cheney isn't sure about parting with some of the family heirlooms. Oh! 
goodness me. Yeah. Alan, did you buy these plates or were you given them or no, inherited no, them? Being, I've inherited them. Yeah. But I know what they're worth. Yeah. That's worth £900, I know that. Alan's happy to see them wow. go, but I've got an idea for Cheney. I would say, if I were you, find one piece that you really like that's a favourite and see if your dad will let you keep it. And, you know, that's the way around it, isn't it? They're probably worth 100, 250 quid to a collector. They're probably worth 50 quid each. It looks like Alan has some interesting family pieces, but he also has some interesting values for them too. These are worth about £700 each. Really? I'll probably look for about 1500 for the two. Yeah? Yeah. Time to see what expert Tom Keane has to say about Alan's estimates, starting with the china. OK, what adds the value of these is if they're transfer printed or hand painted. And how can you tell if they're hand painted? Well, by looking very close under a magnifying glass and see the brush marks, basically. That's hand painted. These are hand painted scenes. That set has got a few pieces missing from it. So it's a part set, and I'd estimate that at auction two to three hundred pounds. I was looking for around eight, nine hundred pounds for this, to be honest with you. Mm. You know. If you can get eight or hundred pounds for that lot, come and see me. We'll make a business together. We'll make a fortune because that is two or three hundred quid lot as it, as it is. Next up, the console table and the mirror I saw earlier. This uh, was a gift to me when I went abroad, actually. It's a gift from a Frenchman for a console table in the Italian style made in China. There's no antique value. It's, it's less than 20 years old, this, mm -hmm. and it's worth Three to five hundred pounds. It might not be the antique that Alan thought, but it's still worth a good amount. A model boat has also caught Tom's eye. I think you've got two or three hundred pounds that you'd be doing fantastically well. I, I, I thought it was five or six hundred, but but you know maybe I'm well out. You don't like it? No. I bet you if you your dad had a boat like that, you'd like it. Alan's storage stash may not be as valuable as he first thought. But Tom has picked out the best unwanted items that could help recoup some of Alan's storage bills. Among them, the collection of china, a console table and mirror, two 19th century candlesticks, an Indian tray top table set, some Elvis stamps, two English comports, and lastly, the model boat. It looks like we could recover some of the money Alan has spent on storage. Let's hope they make a good price at auction. At 250. We're at John Nicholson's Auctioneers in Surrey to say goodbye to the last of our hoarders stash. So, Alan, it's auction day today, and um, I know I'm slightly worried because you have put quite high reserves on some of the items which are way higher than Tom's estimates. The table, I think Tom estimated about 40 or 50 pounds. Well, I want 250 for it. 250? I've, yeah, I've had it in the family so a long time. You're saying you want to hang on to it, aren't you, really? Well, the thing is, I, if I went to an antique dealer, he'd, he'd give me a couple of hundred pounds for it. I know that. Why don't yeah. you take it to an antique dealer? Well, I will probably. I probably <laughs> will take it to an antique dealer, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, we'll see what exactly. Happens. We certainly will, and the moment is nearly upon us. We just have time to see what today's auctioneer makes of Alan's lots. The collection itself is fine. Um, the problem we have as auctioneers, and uh, your valuer has had with this, with this client, is that um, it's been valued. It's been valued by you, it's been valued by us. But the client's not listening. But, you know, who knows? You know, it's an auction. Do you have an amount of money that you want to walk away with today? You're talking about a couple of thousand pounds if everything sells, mm. but I can't see that happening. Mm -hmm. I can't see. I'll be happy to probably come away with a thousand pounds out of two thousand mm. pounds. Well, we should just have to wait and see, won't we? Yep, please go. First up are the Elvis stamps, which Tom estimated at 40 to 50 pounds. 10 bid, 12, 15, 18, 20. Hope they'd make a bit more. There's the bid at 20 pounds. 20 pounds, that's a real shame, but it's a start. Next up is the Indian tray top table that Tom estimated at 40 to 50 pounds, but which Alan put a massive 250 pound reserve on. 
Darby, 30 pounds. Anybody, 30 pounds. Anybody bid me 30 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, that's withdrawn. The owner has slightly inflated idea as to what it's worth. The reserve is a lot more than that. It is withdrawn, no bid, 30 pounds. The console table and mirror also fails to reach Alan's inflated reserve price of 500 pounds. Fair warning, withdrawn. Take it home with you. I will, of course I'll take it home. It looks fabulous, even if I open a shop. However, the tide does turn when Alan's candlesticks go for £25 and the English comports make another £25. Both lots of China reach Tom's low reserve of £100 each. Let's hope Alan's luck is in as his final lot going under the hammer is the model boat. Tom estimated this at £100 to £150. At £100, 10, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280. Oh my goodness. 300 bid. This is interesting. At 300 pounds. 320. And selling. Right. At three hundred and forty pounds. Yes, okay. Alan. Seven. Alan, that okay. is good. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and forty pounds. That's a brilliant end to proceedings. With Alan's boat making a massive one hundred and ninety pounds more than Tom's top estimate. So, Alan, you've raked in five hundred and ninety pounds at the auction. It's not quite the thousand pounds you were looking for, but is it will help to to settle one or two bills, won't it? It'll help to pay a couple of utility bills this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Despite missing out on some sales, Alan has still managed to pile in the pounds. After commission, he's made £522.15 from his auction. He also took Tom's advice and sold his clothes separately. So far, he's made £50. By downsizing his storage unit, he's also made a yearly saving of £728. So his grand total is £1,300.15. He has kept a unit on for some remaining clothes. So, in terms of your storage units, what's happened to all the suits and things? Um, I've got okay. one storage unit. OK. And I've got my rails and my clothing in that particular storage mm -hmm. unit. And hoping to get to zero quite soon. So I'm going to keep tabs on you, Alan, and I want to see you down to zero units, OK? Is that a deal? That's a deal. That's a definite improvement for Alan, so let's hope he sticks to our deal. Coming up, our antiques expert thinks John might have been sitting on a fortune. Ah, there's a few quid there. <gasps> she does breathing heavy. <laughs> and will he make enough money at auction to realise his dreams? Two fifty. Well, this is a little bit better, but it's still worth a lot more than this. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I've been helping two hoarders decide whether to keep, skip, or sell the contents of their units so they can wave goodbye to storage forever. Earlier, fashion guru Alan raised £522, selling off the unwanted contents of his storage unit at auction, as well as making an annual saving of £728 on storage bills. Next up is entrepreneur John, who has spent £4,500 on storage over the past two years. Clearing his storage unit was something of a reality check for John as he realised exactly what he'd been paying to store. Oh, oh, videos. Oh, yes. This is obviously a very foolish thing to have kept. Now it's time to see if our antiques expert Tom Keane can find some unwanted items in John's stash to sell and help him recoup some of the money he's spent. So here's Tom. Hello, Aggie, you right? Yes, good. Hi, how are you? Very this good. Is John. John, nice to meet you, right? Nice to see you as well. And Neil. Hello, Neil, Hello. how are you, right? Fine, thank you. So this is our lot here. These pieces of furniture are very, very easy for me to date from a distance because they're made out of satin walnut. Right. Now, satin walnut was only used by the Ebaldians. They're worth 50 pounds each, those wardrobes now. 50 right. or 60 pounds each. So not very valuable. <laughs> Same as this here. So uh, we're not doing too well value-wise. That's a shame. I wonder if there's more value in that beautiful veneer table John paid £400 for. I was wondering whether it's old or reproduction. What do you think it is, Aggie? I have no idea. I don't know how you tell. Bend down. 
down here and around here, you can see there's no edge to the timber. This is almost certainly plywood with a very thin veneer on top. Oh. This table was made in Italy oh. in about 1984, 85. The first big mistake I made as an antique dealer, I bought one. I think I made about 500 pounds and I sold it for about 50 quid uh, mm. three months later. Let's go to the good stuff. Let's go across it and have a settee. I hope John has more luck with the Chesterfields. As I walked around the corner, I looked at these settees and I thought, ah, there's a few quid there. But then I got disappointed. They're not a pair. If that had been a pair, even with the rip, I'd have been saying two to three thousand pounds. But now they're not a pair, they've got to be sold separately. That's worth between four and seven hundred pounds in that condition. Right. And this one's a bit less, because I don't know why, but the drop end settees, does it still drop down? Does the action still it work on it? Down, yes. Let's have a little oh, go. Let's have a look. There it is. Oh, there you go. And again. It's not as pretty as the other one. This will make, on a bad day, 250, and a good day, 500. Right. Well, it's a pity they're not a pair, but at least John could make some money. Now it's time for this collection of unusual artwork. These are some paintings that uh, I got round about in the 80s. I don't know if you had any view as to whether these are worth anything or not. Did you pay a lot of money for them? No, not a lot. They were sort of given to me by a friend, so... Um, did the friend like you? I think he did, at the time. <laughs> so nasty, isn't he? I don't think they're a great value to them. If they're worth 10 or 20 pounds each, that's about the whack. Right. What okay. I can see, but uh, by all means, get a second opinion, because you never know. So, not much value in the paintings, but Tom has spotted the rug that John was planning to give to a friend and has some interesting information I'm sure John will want to hear. Companies like Wilton and Ackminster used to make these sort of carpets in England. But there's another company called Dunny Gall. If it's Wilton or Ackminster, which it might be, it's probably 100 to 150 pounds. It's quite a nice quality carpet or rug. If it's Dunny Gall, it's 1,000 pounds. Right, OK. That's all money. So um, don't disp dispose of it until we find out what it's worth. Smashing, OK. Good, all right. For that price, I think John might have to reevaluate what he does with his rug. Among the pieces Tom has recommended to take to auction are two Chesterfield sofas, a chest of drawers, and a chaise long. John is still undecided as to whether to put the rug into auction or give it to a friend. As for the rest of John's furniture, Tom thinks he'll get the best price if he sells them online. So, I've arranged for John to take his remaining furniture to an online internet auction trading company where big profits can be made. Internet auction services such as this one do all the hard work. They pick up the items and help sell them on online auction sites on your behalf. They sell everything from household appliances and furniture to collectibles and antiques and, like most auction houses, charge a commission. Looking at your particular items, we've got quite a lot of furniture in there. When we're dealing with online sales, people tend to search by keywords. So if we've got that, then we can really hang a sale off it. With things which are more generic, we're looking to attract in regular buyers with a great photograph. Um, it's not as good as having a good keyword, but a great photograph in there, a lovely description, something that entices buyers into the marketplace. So looking at your individual bits of furniture, I think the table is a really beautiful piece. Once you decide you'd like to sell your items, they'll give you a link to a seller page where you can keep an eye on how they are doing. Once bought, they will handle the shipping and transfer the proceeds from the sale directly to you. John's furniture is now online. Here's hoping he makes a healthy profit over the coming months. Now it's time to head back to a more traditional style of auction and find out how the rest of John's unwanted pieces of furniture do when they go under the hammer. That's your rug, isn't it, there? Uh, yes, it is, absolutely. So what happened? Well, I was sort of persuaded by the colour of the estimate from Tom. So what estimate was Tom saying? It was between 400 and 700 pounds. What do you think, Neil? Do you think they're realistically high hopes? I think they probably are, yeah. If it would be me, it would be straight in the skip, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> What does he know, Johnny? Well, what yeah. does he know? I mean, <laughs> we'll see, won't we? We will we'll see. see. Absolutely, we'll see. We have no, we have no right. idea no. what will happen. It all depends on, you know, the crowd here and who's after what. Correct. That's what it comes down exactly. to. Exactly. Can you remind me what you've got in again? 
We've got uh, chaise long, mm -hmm. two Chesterfields, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a chest of chest drawers. Of drawers. Yeah. Do you have reserves on any of these? Yes, I do. I sort of uh, listened to Tom's advice, and I've actually put on the reserves that he suggested. Now, I imagine you're a man who would say, just let it go at whatever price. I oh. wouldn't have bothered with reserves. How did I know that? I don't know. Well, the moment is nearly upon us, but first, let's see what our auctioneer makes of John's lots. This furniture, which we're selling on behalf of John, when he put it into store, was worth quite a lot more than it is today. And now, he's also paid all the storage charges. So, he's on a loser before he starts. Now, the one thing out of what he's got is the rug. It's more of a carpet than a rug, isn't it? Um, now, what I've suggested there is, is that we don't have the buyers for that today. We pull that out and we put that in a specialist furniture sale along with lots of Persian and Indian rugs. So, uh, if I don't get the price I think it's worth, I'll pull it. You set for this? Are you in the mood for it? Very much so, yes. There looks to be like a good crowd here today. So we'll have a look mm -hmm. and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's hope his pieces sell well. The first item up is John's chaise long, which Tom estimated at 80 to 100 pounds. Oh, that I made a couple of years ago. 300 pound, 50 pounds bid. This is rubbish. 60, anybody? Add 50 pounds. Sorry, Look at your no, face. 50 pounds. Was it worth storing, sir? That's the question we've got to ask ourselves. Probably not. Why are you looking so happy? I just find all the music, <laughs> all this valuable stuff. Oh, nobody wants it. Oh, dear. <laughs> the chaise long fails to sell. Let's hope he has better luck with the chest of drawers, estimated at 80 to 100 pounds. No bid at 50 pounds. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Cheeky. But it's a real shame that John hasn't recouped any money for these pieces of furniture. John's next lot is the rug he was contemplating giving to a friend. Super carpet, 100 bid, 50, 200. At 200 pounds, 50 I'm looking for, 300 now. At 250. Well, this is a little bit better, pounds. but it's still... It's worth a lot more than this. At 250 pounds, it's had its time then. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to not sell that. I'm going to put that in one of the special antique sales, along with collectors' Persian oh. carpets and rugs. It'll make a lot more than that in that sale. Well, that sounds a lot better. That's so a good result. I'm too. happy with that. Yes. Are you happy with that? I'm happy yeah. with that. The auctioneer thinks John will raise much more money for his rug at a specialist carpet auction. <laughs> Lastly, the Chesterfield sofas and Tom valued the drop-down Chesterfield at 250 to 400 pounds. 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240, 250, and 250, at 250 pounds. 60, I'm looking for, fair warning, selling at 250 pounds. Well, I've got the bus fare back. <laughs> Well, that's more like it. John makes the low estimate of £250. Will the larger one make even more? And I'm 200 bid. 220, 240, 260, 280. 300, 320. 340, 360. At £360. Selling at £300. And £60. Well done. Well, there we go. A sale at £360. That's a fantastic result for the second Chesterfield. I am happy. John's two Chesterfields were the real stars of the auction today and helped him make £539.85 after commission. He has also managed to sell two items of furniture on the online auction site for £170. He's still waiting for his other pieces to sell. By downsizing his storage, John has also managed to save a yearly storage bill of £933, making a grand total of £1,642.85. That's 
going to more than carpet your house. In fact, do the whole of the outside of the house as well. I think it? I think it probably would. Yes, I think it's certainly going to make. Uh, um, a good old dent in getting that yes. into the house, yes. Well, and as for those other things that didn't sell, you know they will sell, but you just have to find the right place Correct. to sell Correct. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of them to the uh, online mm -hmm. auction. Mm -hmm. And um, am I right in assuming that nothing's going back into storage? Nothing's going back into storage at all. I am, in fact, getting rid of things out of the house, so I'm really in a culling mood. Oh, I'm mood. loving your culling mood. <laughs> yeah. This must be music uh, to your music. ears. It is music to my ears, especially the uh, saving of the storage costs. So, job well done. I think, Neil, he owes us a drink, don't you? A big one. Well, a success on the storage front for John, but it looks like Alan's still stuck in his ways. Let's hope he finds some bars for the rest of his hoard soon. Remember to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.